We've all been watching the longest running show of modern times. It's been running so long now, in fact, no one remembers a time before the show. The actors change, no one stays youthful, and younger ones replace those grown too old to carry off their parts, at least some of them. But the script and the big song and dance numbers, those stay the same. Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle them. I said razzle-dazzle them, not medazzle-am. No one jokes about medazzle-am. Careful staging meant the whole effect was spectacular for ages. Audiences went home convinced they'd seen real people telling a true story. The stars were luminous, the atmosphere enveloping. They could remember the songs, teach them to their kids. During some or other performance a few years back, however, the house lights started to come up, one by one and then a few at a time. Theatres with the lights on are tired old places. Without the illusion, the smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd, they're just empty rooms. More and more of the audience can see how it's done, the shape of the stage, the trap doors and the clapboard scenery, the pan stick makeup on the faces of the cast, the tops of the heads of the musicians in the orchestra pit. How they were supposed to be fooled by a world of make-believe. Make-believe is a fragile bubble. Once it's pricked, it's gone. The make-believe I'm referring to is the story our politicians and other performers, other actors, have been telling us about the ways of the world. And in this scenario, the house lights, the revealing illumination, has been provided by the internet. The internet was the idea of the US military, a lot of the best tricks are, to keep their boffins' computers working no matter what happened in a world made unpredictable by nuclear weapons. But its unintended consequence was to connect billions of people who would never otherwise have known of each other's existence, and let them talk. The internet's been growing around us since the 1960s, but in recent years it reached critical mass, and now it has unexpectedly turned a bright and revealing light onto what were supposed to remain as shadows. That's why it suits them to blame the internet for so-called conspiracy theories and misinformation, and to seek to censor it. Back on that stage where the latest cast of actors are still hamming it up as hard as they can go, the show might soon be over. More and more of the audience, especially in the cheap seats, are restless, aware of how uncomfortable their seats are. Now the illusion is shattered. It's not fun anymore. Not in the way the creators intended. Worse, more of the audience are whispering among themselves, laughing at instead of with what's happening on stage. Who knows, audiences being fickle, it might only be a little while before the bags of rotten fruit come out. For the first time in the show's long run, a lot of lines sound old and tired, and yet the hammiest actors are still trotting them out, because after all, that's showbiz, and the show must go on. Safe and effective used to get a round of applause, much like we're all in it together, and it's an emergency, and we're doing our best. Now those tried and trusted staples just get a groan. Build back better. Do us a favour, surely no one buys that one anymore. Saving democracy, that used to have them on their feet and cheering. Now it sounds hollow, like the sets and the backdrop. Climate crisis, a world at boiling point. The clock is ticking. Pull the other one, mutter the hecklers. It's got bells on. Give the showrunners their due, they try and keep the show fresh with the addition of special guests. Since war in Ukraine is running out of steam, big guns are now pointed at Niger, of all places. No one in the audience saw that one coming. Niger? Where even is Niger? They call the chorus. Niger has apparently forgotten its role and has been ad-libbing, telling the French to leave them and their uranium, used by France for vital and valuable electricity, alone. Unlike the army of Russia, the previous baddie, which has the fifth most powerful fighting force in the world, a real contender, Niger's army ranks just 119 out of a world total of 145. Surely they've just been wheeled on stage as a fall guy the ageing hero can knock out with a single punch. All joking aside, and it really, really isn't funny, why does the West keep barging on stage in Africa, one African country after another down the decades made to take the fall? Do none of those African lives matter? Apart from the gross asymmetry in any fight involving the US and an impoverished West African nation, Utterly exhausted by decades of plunder by the West, another war is a familiar plotline. Pantomime villain Victoria Newland, a.k.a. Acting United States Deputy Secretary of State, has been reprising the role she played in Ukraine, another performance of her big number, which is It's My Way or the Highway. 
But it's anyone's guess if the crowd are ready to join in at the chorus this time. It's an increasingly tough room. The crowd are supposed to join in with the big numbers. For a while now it's been, how do you solve a problem like Imran Khan? A generation or two of British audiences remember Imran Khan as an iconic cricketing celebrity and international playboy. He wooed and wed society princess Jemima Goldsmith and we were told they lived a life of enviable glamour. In a plot twist of note, Khan put the glitz behind him and embarked on a successful career as a politician, emerging in time as a man of his people back in his homeland of Pakistan. He reached and held the office of Prime Minister. He paid for the building of cancer hospitals there, out of his own pocket. People love him there. Back in March last year, Khan deviated from the script when he refused to condemn Russia for her invasion of Ukraine. Coming up with lines of his own, he asked of the West, What do you think of us? Are we your slaves? Warming to his theme, he said, We are friends with Russia and we are also friends with America. We are friends with China and with Europe. We are not in any camp. He said Pakistan would remain neutral and would work with those trying to end the war in Ukraine. The US accused Khan's Pakistan of what they called aggressive neutrality, which sounds like an oxymoron to me, but what do I know? By now, Imran Khan has been deposed as Prime Minister and is presently in jail. Whether he will emerge from behind bars to perform a third act is anyone's guess, but the audience aren't holding their breath. If all the world's a stage, then surely the US is the West End, or the end of the West. What's happening to that country now would be comedy or a downright farce if it wasn't actually a tragedy. Former President Donald Trump has been being savaged by the so-called liberal critics since at least 2016. They never get tired of pointing out all the flaws in his performance, despite the fact he was a real crowd pleaser for millions of his countrymen. The most recent plot has him apparently destined for jail, accused of everything under the sun, while present President Joe Biden heads a family whose corruption is exposed for all to see. Their dodgy dealings are centre stage, brightly spotlit, and yet the audience is not supposed to notice. Who are they kidding? It's not just the big set pieces that are exposed by the unforgiving light of online chatter and information sharing. Even the throwaway gags are failing to land. Back here in Britain, former Covid medical officer Jonathan Van Tam, JVT, as he was described on the flyer for the show, has exited stage left, one of many bad actors pursued not by a bear, but by uncounted numbers of those injured or dead on account of the injectables he helped push, while, in my opinion, wearing the costume of a government advisor, and is presently demonstrating the breadth of his acting skills by taking on a leading role for big pharma giant Moderna. How we laughed. All together now. Oh no, we didn't. Much to the annoyance of the scriptwriters, a bunch dismissed at first as mere hecklers, namely GB News, have been stealing some of the limelight. In just the last few weeks, we've seen to the humiliating climb down of high and mighty bankers who entitled themselves to deny bank accounts to, and so effectively make non-people of, all manner of law-abiding and tax-paying citizens of this country. And this week, GB News handed over a petition signed by a third of a million viewers demanding a guaranteed secure future for cash in this country. No sooner did it land than the Treasury, no less, issued a statement saying GB News had got the parlous situation of cash spot on and declaring that action would be taken to protect the notes and pounds. As our economist Liam Halligan has been saying all week, two million people in this country have no bank account and 10% of households no regular access to the internet so that cash is nothing less than their lifeblood. You'd want to hope the Treasury aren't just playing to the gallery, throwing sweeties into the crowd as a distraction, and only time will tell if their pledge is just another act, another line they can score out later on. Gaslight is a 1938 play about a husband who uses lies and cheap tricks to try and persuade his wife she's going mad so that he might steal from her. Among other things, he tampers with the gaslighting in their home, turning it steadily down. When she says it's growing dimmer and dimmer, he tells her she must be insane. As is often said now, we, the audience, are presently being gaslighted by a whole cast of bad actors posing as our leaders. I say it so they can say it's us going mad while they dismantle the world around us and line their pockets along the way. But the more we see of their deceit, the more the shadows are illuminated instead by the conversations we can have with each other 
by the truth to be found in the online world and elsewhere, the more they overact and desperately until they're no more convincing than the cardboard sets they've surrounded themselves with. Here's the thing. Despite their wish we were still in the dark, the lights are on in the auditorium. I say the show's over, whether those bad actors accept it or not. The band stopped playing, the lights are well and truly on, and we are tired of the fiction. There's nothing else for it but to leave them to it, to walk out into the light of day and get about the business of real life. That's all, folks. That's my opinion, and you're free to disagree if you like. Keep your tweets and emails coming through the show. You can email gbviews at gbnews.com, and you can tweet me as well, at gbnews, and I'll try to get to your comments later in the show. Laura, what do you make of what I had to say? Laura Dodsworth, of course, you need no introduction to this show. No, Laura I Dodsworth, always author need the introduction. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, you, you, are, you are the monologue man. If all the world's a stage, you do a jolly good soliloquy. I think, um, I think the reason that your monologues are popular is because they are these very poetic elegies, but with a, a, an artery of anger, you know. I hear that, and it resonates, as it does for many thousands of people. But do you think, do you think we've been subjected... I think it's a fiction. I think we've been lied to and there's been a pretense around reality that's now being exposed. Yes, yes. Now, don't worry, I wasn't going to compliment you for too much longer. I was just going to say, I feel myself having, having been sliding off the fence a little on this issue myself. You know, I recently just changed the introduction on my Substack, and I said, we live in extraordinary times. They are nothing short of apocalyptic. No, I don't mean the world's boiling, not that. I mean, in the, you know, in the um, original Greek meaning of the word, we live in a time of an unveiling and a mm. revealing and a laying bare of truth. And more and more people see things um, to be artificially constructed. And what it is, is um, it's a grand deception. It's a ma macabre play on our innocence, our trust and our human biases and our fallibility. It's why I just wrote my last book, Free Your Mind, The New World of Manipulation, How to Resist It, because I don't think we've ever lived in a time like this. I tell you what, though, you do say um, that we're all working it out because of the Internet, but I actually think it's more than that. I don't think it's just that we're we're seeing into dark corners that were kept uh, dark and secret. I think that they are also drawing back the curtain. There's one chapter in my book called Be Skeptical Big Brother and I open with, we open, Patrick Fagan, my co-author and I, we open with um, a US Army recruitment video and it's called Ghosts in the Machine and it says all the world's a stage and you've never seen anything like it. You would think this US Army recruitment video is actually a trailer for the latest horror film, maybe a uh, part of the Batman franchise or a video game, but it's not. It's a recruitment video to the US 4th Army PSYOP division. More and more, we're being told about PSYOPs, about propaganda, you know, the nudge unit publishes its reports. We live in this time which is so post-factual that they're even talking about what they do while they do it. How does that work in their, fa their favour? I mean, why would you, why would you, you know, why would a magician reveal how his tricks work? What's the gain? Well, only some of it. I tell you what, if, if we're being told how some things work, I do wonder how, how much else is left in the shadows. I mean, it's just like a, a little small detail, but another thing I noticed last year was the National Intelligence for Military Aviation Unit. I might have got that a bit wrong, but it's essentially one of the US Army aviation units changed its logo for one day last autumn. It changed it from um, aircraft to a collection of aircraft and a flying saucer. And I contacted their press division at the time and said, oh, what's, you know, what's this? What's this new logo about? And eventually, you know, my, my request gets passed around like a hot grenade mm -hmm. between sergeant majors of publicity. And they come back and they say it's an incorrect logo posted erroneously. Well, of course it's not. You can't tell me that the U.S. government erroneously posted a, a logo with a flying saucer on it. So lots of, these, lots of these little things happen. What does it mean? I don't know. But I tell you what, tyranny stops when people call out the truth. So, you know, the last defence against tyranny is to witness, to speak up and to call out the truth. And it's easy. It is easy. It is. You don't is. have to remember anything.